you folks, 965, just having my breakfast um, at the moment. We're, um, we're back out and about. Um, we're over in the Brecon Beacons. That's probably a bit dark. We're over in the Brecon Beacons. Um, actually going up to the Black Mountain. Not the Black Mountains, which is the eastern side, but the Black Mountain. So we're on the western edge of the Brecon Beacons. And um, I actually had quite a good route and a trek planned for today. Uh, but the weather, as you can see, is pretty grim at the moment. It's only 6 a.m. so uh, it could all change but um, we're going to uh, we were sort of looking at a five and a half mile trek over multiple peaks today starting with the Garrig Lloyd but um, well, I guess that's how you say it I don't know but we'll check back in in a bit when uh, I've made up my mind. Okay so I'm trying to look um, really uh, properly in some miserable weather the uh, the two action cams that i've got this one here is the kit vision rush this is the bullet cam you've seen before and i'm also trying out the one i was on just now which is the kit vision edge so we shall see how they perform and i brought the super selfie stick so the decision i've come to only downside is i can't see the screen on this one i've gone with the waterproof cover Full waterproof for myself and we're gonna go for it right so we're actually navigating by map today because I can't see anything so I was hoping to get to the top and just sort of scout the peaks and be done but because I can't see anything I'm gonna uh, probably have to uh, use the map so we're on our way now towards Gallag Lloyd and um, I've got the camera um, strapped to my arm so hopefully it's a, a not to a stupid an angle the weather's no good for my normal camera it would be ruined so it'll have to be these Okay, so we now want to approach to the Garag Lloyd or the Garag Lloyd, whatever, however you say it. I'm going to go with Garag Lloyd. That's what it looks like. Uh, yeah, the fog clears and then it comes back down, and then it clears and then it comes back down. So, but this place is um, just a boulder field. As I say, those of you that have seen 104's video have probably seen Garag Lloyd before. Uh, I say we're not stopping on here we're going to uh, get to the top and plot to the next one which I think is I can't remember <laughs> we'll see when we get to the top So, the top was completely fog bound and I'm using the, the map and compass in conjunction with the GPS here and we were walking generally in this direction and the fog is literally in the two, two seconds I started filming just cleared and there's the trig. It's easy to see how people get lost up here, look. It all looks the same. Right, we're off to the trig. Okay, so that was Garrig Lloyd. And we're now on our way to the next peak, which is Fol Freif. F-O-E-L-F-R-A-I-T-H. Fol or Vol Freif. However they say it, I don't know. So I've just taken a compass bearing from the trig point on Garrig Lloyd to the summit of Fold Freyth, which is basically why I'm walking in this direction. Um, you could see it before. You probably see some, I'll pop some pictures up. But uh, yeah, if, if you do get a chance for the mist to clear, it's good to do it then if you can, because 
it's sort of in your mind then which way you're going to head you've got the compass to back you up but you've got a good idea in your head it's always nice to know that you're sort of heading in the right general direction uh, I'm by no means a map and compass expert but I know enough to get me by which when the weather's like this or worse is pretty pretty handy because you come up here it's a nice sunny day you set up your station you're on the radio for three four hours when you pack down the weather's all closed in you can't rely on your sort of you can't rely on your line of sight you get very disorientated uh, you know already we're only about 100 meters away from the summit of Garrig Lloyd and it's almost all disappeared so you know that drops into the mist and you turn around to try and get your bearings and all of a sudden you're lost right we're gonna carry on um, I have had a few questions about the map and the compass and stuff and the um, GPS so I will be doing a video on that I'm gonna be doing a video on my head torches that I use because I've been asked about it um, and there's a few more in the pipeline so uh, we'll catch you a bit later on right so that one there directly in front is full Freyf I'm actually going to skirt around skirt around the bottom of it and cut straight through there but uh, yeah I mean you imagine coming along it coming around here if you got stuck and it got dark and you ended up in one of those you, I'm better thinking about do it anyway it's nice to be back out I'm oh my, my thing's going it's nice to be back out I um I certainly do so it seem to have got um, most of my what's it back now so that's all good we're raring to go making some good progress across the old uh, Brecon Beacons or Brecon Beacons or Banal Brahiniog whatever you want to call it the eeriest thing about this sort of place though is you can hear voices from miles away but they sound like they're sort of behind you <laughs> so <laughs> that's full free there look so yeah it's a bit of a weirdy a bit of a weirdy feeling sometimes uh, they must get it as well because they probably hear me talking away but uh, there we go okay so hopefully this is all coming out all right um, we're still on route to well as I mentioned I'm going to some skirting around the bottom of Folfraith which is there that's Folfraith otherwise it's all the way around up up and down to get to there and that's where I want to go so I'm just taking a, uh, a shortcut I have got the GPS with me which is a billy bonus because at any given time you can figure out exactly where you are if you didn't have the GPS you'd have to rely on features you know features of the land um, landmarks if there are any um, in this instance over there I don't know if you can see it on that I can't I can't zoom just above that sheet <laughs> you can see the the rocky escarpment that's actually marked on the uh, that's marked on the map so you can use that as a landmark you can use that to, to navigate but having the GPS as well is 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 very good as I say at any point you just stop check your bearing get a, a, a well it actually gives you a 10 figure grid reference but six is enough I usually use six and um, you can then plot another bearing but uh, I'm not going to go on about the maps but it, it it's a good skill to have you know if you're going to come to places like this and do activations and stuff it's really really is a good skill to have because you know if your GPS fails or your um, what's it called the track back or something that you just retraces your steps if they fail you know you've had it um, a lot of people rely on the technology to the point where if it fails they're knackered because they don't actually pay attention to where they're going 
they just rely on the tech and I don't like to do that um, it's good as an additional aid but I, 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 I do advocate knowing how to use a map at least basic skills anyway so uh, you don't know if you can see it on here but that that peak in the middle right at the top that's where I'm aiming for and um, we'll catch you back in a bit Okay, we're probably we're about halfway there now, and we're uh, currently traversing the side of this um, uh, slope, and the path is a little bit on the edge, but uh, the way we got to go. Well, it's not the way we got to go, but it is the way I'm going to go. There's so many peaks over here, um, so many to choose from, you know, you've got the Garrig Lloyd, that Gary's done a few activations on now, um, I never found the stream that he uses, but obviously took a different route, um, Full Fraith, and then you get, you know, you've got this peak here, this, this one here, you got that one over there, even that one up there is pretty good, so, sport for choice for uh, CTX activations. I don't know if this actually counts, although I, I have got a PMR radio with me, so, you know, if you carry a PMR radio, no, that doesn't count. I've had a couple of people now say to me, oh, if I go for a walk and I've got a PMR in my pocket, does that count? No, it doesn't count. <laughs> That's not what an activation is. An activation is when you activate the station. So, or, you can go CTX walkabout, but it's, you know, you've got to have a... Uh, you've got to have some kind of a decent sort of um, decent set of copies or something. You can't just have it have a, a radio in your pocket. You know, you've got got to make a proper effort, really. Um, today's more of a check my fitness and get myself back to conditioned again because I've just been away from it for too long. But it was unavoidable. Uh, wow, that's quite an impressive uh, escarpment there. Nice. So, once I get to the top of this one, we might be able to see the final destination, but I'm not sure. So, a Teletubby village down there. Nice. Right, we'll catch back shortly. I don't think I've ever seen quite so much rock in one spot. <sighs> oh dear. I haven't seen a single person all day, not one. Uh, I've heard what sounded like up to 20 people, but I've not actually um, seen anyone, which is great. It's, it's fantastic for me because I don't want to see anyone. <laughs> that's, that's the whole reason for coming out. You can be by yourself and reflect and 
whatever else people do when they're on their own etc etc and if uh, if you do need to have a bang in number two you can confidently go without worrying about anyone popping up over the hill so that's all good the weather's closing in quite rapidly now um, it was about 15 degrees earlier but um, it's it's dropped down quite a bit now actually it's quite cold so I don't think I'm gonna do the whole journey um, I can't get any signal or um, mobile Wi-Fi stuff so I can't check the mountain weather report before I came out um, I did have a quick look this morning before before I left the house I'm actually going to cut it short this journey because there's an, another big section to do over that way and uh, I think it's, it's going to be pushing it too close I mean we do get something like I think it's 17 hours of daylight now I mean that's that's a great amount of sunlight it's a superb oh that's a superb um, amount of light but there's no point in me pushing it too far and I don't really want to have to be coming back in the dark um, I've got head torches and stuff with me so I, I could at a push but I don't think it's worth taking the chance to be honest not with all these rocks and stuff you know one wrong move one slip and with the fact that there's no one about uh, it's it's always a risk but you've got to do what you can to limit those risks really um, I was hoping to get across to um, I think they call it Lan Lana Van Vach which is the it's like a lake on the opposite side to Van Brahoeniog so what I'm gonna do is get to the end of this peak here get to this next peak and then uh, I'll just um, divert backwards I'm gonna take a different route back I'm gonna go back past the um, the old quarry that's around so it'll be a different route on the way back and um, it's a slightly shorter route I believe from what I can tell um, so yeah it's been a nice trip out I have enjoyed it absolutely whacked now though <laughs> completely knackered <laughs> but uh, you always know you've worked yourself hard when you uh, feel tired so it was um, worth well worth it I thoroughly enjoyed it anyway you know it's not for everybody as I as we always say you know but if you if you like the peace and quiet and you like the scenery and you like you know the isolation if you like which I do um, then you know get out there get some basic skills be safe and enjoy it um, <laughs> I got the uh, the Hilda Ogden one on again so it does a good job actually it's um, got very good wicking properties so it does draw the sweat away from your head um, so there we go so now we've switched over from the brush to the edge and um, it'd be interesting to see what the, uh, the comparison is like it's actually outside of its box now the audio like with most action cams I think when it's in that box because it's designed to be waterproof obviously it's a sealed box so can't expect anything else from it really but um, yeah it's uh, an interesting place I've, I've never seen so much rock As some of you will probably know if you saw the video where I did myself in up on Clee Hills. Um, again, if you like sort of exploring places and different scenery, I'll put the, I'll put the, uh, the link in somewhere so you can have a look at that video and you can see what Clee Hill looks like. Um, but yeah, me and rocks don't usually get on very well. Um, touch wood. I haven't actually done myself any mischief today, so uh, yeah, we're going to um, we're going to get to the end here. I'm going to uh, oh, I've got a dry throat. I'm going to um, have a bit to eat, have a brew, 
and um, then we're going to take a wander back. So, not quite my usual video. There's no radio in this video, but I had to get back out. I, I was, you know, at the point where I could get back out. I've got the energy to do it now. I'm, I'm sort of back up to where I need to be. So, we're going to start getting those videos out if we can. Um, I'll do a bit at the end with all the, the details and stuff that I want to say. I've got a I've just changed my email address. Well, not changed it, I've just created another one because I've had a few messages go missing. So, um, I've just j created another email address. So, if you want to send me stuff, if you want to send me an email, if you want to ask me some questions, you'll be able to do that. If you've gone out and you've explored somewhere or you've gone out and done a radio activation and you want to send me some pictures of, of where it is, feel free to do so. Um, so yeah, I'll have a chat with you all uh, at the end, in a bit of a better spot, and we're going to get a wriggle on up to the end now, in a bit. When we started this morning, we came down off of that peak there, and down through the valley, and then up this way, but we're going to go back that way towards, I don't know if you can see it, the quarry there, or the quarried outside, and back round to where the wagon's parked. Whew, what a day, I think we've covered about... We've covered about 10 miles in total, right-ish, which isn't much really in the scheme of things, but considering the terrain and the, you know, the ups and the downs and the tufts and the rocks, and the, it's quite an arduous blooming journey actually, but I needed to uh, see where I was in terms of my fitness, and I don't think I'm too bad as it goes, so that's a, that's a Billy bonus. But um, yeah, we're going to get um, back towards the old uh, motor now. Well, I say now. You can see how far away that is. So there's quite a lot of ground to cover still. Okay, so we're not far off from uh, getting back to the wagon now. Um, just going to point, point out that you see this where the grass is all growing. you got to watch out for that because that usually indicates that underneath it's quite wet and boggy. So... If you can go round it without much of a detour, I would advise you go round it. Otherwise, you'll need a prodding stick because one step you'll be fine, and the next step you'll be uh, you'll be up to your knee or your waist. So uh, watch out. The other thing I was going to say was these sheep trails are quite often handy things to follow. It, it's not something you can follow without question every time because it could lead you off somewhere completely in the wrong direction, but. You know, if you've kind of got an idea where you are and where you want to get to, they can be quite a nice flat thing to follow, rather than the tufts and the bits of rock and that. You you can see that they've worn quite a nice path actually. So yeah, just a couple of things to uh, mention. Should you decide to um, branch out and try some mountain walking. Here we are at the quarry. So we're not far away now. I'm going to stay away from in there because most of those blocks look like they're about ready to fall again. So <laughs> I'm going to give that a miss. As much as I'm tempted to go in there, I'm going to get a mess. <laughs> 